Next up, we have Dr. Kat Arney. Uh, Dr. Kat Arney is a science writer and broadcaster. Her first book, Herding Hemingway's Cats, Understanding How Our Genes Work, is out now. And her second, How to Code a Human, is coming later this year. And a five-part series, Did the Victorians Ruin the World? Written and presented with her sister, science comedian Helen Arney, will be broadcast on BBC Radio 4 in April. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kat Arney! I just can't afford to get any shorter. I'm really, <laughs> really nervous about that. Um, thank you, thank you for having me, and thank you for listening to my bad ad hoc hypothesis. As a geneticist, I thought it was very appropriate to present something that uh, is genetics-y in tone, so I'm afraid we are going to have to do a bit of actual real science first. So, um, we know that through advances in DNA sequencing technology that around half of the human genome is junk. Don't call it junk. Every time someone says the word junk DNA, a graduate student dies. Please do not, do not use the word junk DNA. It is, of course, non-coding DNA. And much of this non-coding DNA was derived from retroviruses, such as HIV seen here. These are retroviruses that got into our genome millions and millions of years ago and have since copied and pasted themselves around. Now, uh, this is broadly how it works. This is my uh, really shitty diagram. Uh, so the, the viral RNA is basically copied into DNA, inserts into the genome. Through a similar copy-paste mechanism, these uh, retroviruses make endless copies of themselves, spreading throughout the genome, hopping around, reproducing wildly, basically becoming completely degenerate and incoherent. It's like the world's best beach party. Uh, <laughs> And in fact, actually, these viruses, they're not just, you know, sitting around doing nothing in particular. Well, quite a lot of them are, to be honest. Uh, but some of them have been co-opted to become switches, control switches in our DNA that turn genes on and off. So uh, some of these switches are used, for example, to turn on genes involved in the brain. Some are involved in the immune system. There's even viral-derived genes involved in human reproduction. And it may really surprise you to know that actually the difference between human faces and our closest primate relatives, chimps, these differences are down to viral-derived DNA sequences. So, uh, <laughs> you know, although many of these viruses are very, very old and, and most of them are very, very dead, we actually do know that some of them do hop around. For example, one in every 20 newborn babies actually has a new retroviral insertion in its newborn DNA. Can I get, can I get an aww? Aww. aww. New baby retrovirus. You're <laughs> so cute. Uh, so, we do know that these viruses can still go on the move today. And actually, one of the things that tends to mobilize retroviruses is stress. This is effectively a way of reshuffling the genome. I mean, the, the consequences can be a bit chaotic at the time. You've got these viruses just hopping around, going wherever they want to go. But actually, it's a very powerful way of generating genetic diversity in a species. And at times of stress, you want new genetic variants to try and cope with the changing environment, the changing situation. And what has been more stressful than 2016? <laughs> uh, we've had a slew of celebrity deaths. We have, of course, had Brexit. We have had Trump. And uh, I really don't think that this trend is going to stop here. Uh, this is actually the climate change graph, but it suits my purposes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty stressful as well, I'll give you that. But we can see that over time, stressful events in the human population are increasing year on year, and, and we can really see it shooting up very dramatically. So I believe that the trend of stress to the human population that started in 2016 and is, is only going to be set to continue, I think this could be a very powerful motivator for the evolution of humanity. And this is my hypothesis, that these stressful events of 2016 are actually triggering a quantum leap in human evolution, uh, effectively reshuffling the deck of humanity, activating our retroviruses to generate entirely new types of human that can cope with the, oh my Jesus Christ, God, what have we let ourselves in for future that awaits us? 
Uh, so, I mean, also coupled with uh, what I like to call the feck it response, <laughs> which is the natural response of humans to seek out basically anyone to have sex with when things are getting really bad. <laughs> uh, we can see that these new retroviral insertions, these new genetic variations, will spread incredibly rapidly through the whole human population. This is powerful evolutionary fuel. So I think that there are a number of uh, new genetic human variants that we can expect to see. For example, we can expect to see more luxuriant ear hair. <laughs> Given that so many of our great musical icons have died, and that modern music is frankly shit, uh, this ear hair will grow, it will block out the sounds of unwanted, just that wailing that comes out of Radio 1 now. <laughs> Sorry, I think I just became my mum. <laughs> uh, the other thing we can expect, we can see changes in human pigmentation. For example, perhaps becoming more orange to fit in with our leaders. <laughs> uh, more seriously, I think that uh, given also very strong selective pressure of a potential nuclear war with China, we might see radiation resistance <laughs> spreading through the population. Uh, there are some other alternatives as well. Not only could uh, the human genome, the genes involved in our metabolism, they could be reshuffled. Also, the microbiome, the bacteria growing inside us. I think there's real potential to actually have new metabolic variants that mean we could generate our own alcohol internally <laughs> and just ride this one out in a beautiful, glorious, drunken haze. Uh, and finally, if all of that fails, we might hope to see genetic variants that lead to aluminium sequestration under the skin of the scalp. And uh, we may generate our own tinfoil hats. <laughs> I think, ladies and gentlemen, I think that this reshuffled deck, these activated retroviruses, could bring a, a glorious new future to humanity. I'd like you to welcome Human 2.0. <laughs> And all of this is true. Please do buy my book. Thank you very much.